Welcome to the Tabernacle Motherfucking Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. And I want to present to you the reason you guys are here. From everything you've seen them on, the podcast, Fear Factor, the UFC, my brother from a different mother, Mr. Joe Rogan. Smells like waiting here. Holy shit! We're all going to jail. I write shit down when I'm high, and I get mad at myself when I'm sober. I wrote this down: a unicorn is a donkey from the future. What the fuck does that mean? It means you need to stop smoking so much weed, stupid. Becoming. Thanks for not making fun of my haircut right away. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yo, I had to tap out to baldness. At a certain point in time, you can't keep getting haircuts where your hair still looks like shit. That's just, you gotta admit what's going on. Father time, you cruel bitch, you win again. When I was young, I had a hair transplant, so I have this stupid scar in the back of my head. You see that thing right there? It's like a little smile. It's a, it's a dumb thing that I did when I was 20, or t- in my 20s. When, when you're young and someone convinces you that you can fix something you don't like about yourself, you can do some stupid shit. And that's the dumbest one ever. Hair transplants, it's one of the most ridiculous ideas ever. You're going to take a bunch of hair from back here where it never falls out and move it up here where it's fallen out. So it's like taking a bunch of really healthy people and you move them into a neighborhood where everyone's dying. So their neighbors are just flying off the face of the earth. You're like, what the fuck is going on? Hold the ground. Where are we? There's some shit you can't fix. You can't fix lips. You can try, but you're just going to freak people the fuck out. Okay? <laughs> Period. No one has ever taken five days off work and come back. Like, uh. <laughs> and everybody's like, I like it. I like it. That's better. No, that's a sign you're fucking crazy or you made out with a beehive. Something went wrong. The fuck are you doing, you crazy bitch? They didn't know. How could they know the first women to try the lips? How could they know that it wouldn't work when it works so well with tits? <laughs> See, that's where it's confusing, because tits can be ridiculous. They, don't, they look like fucking staph infections. If your tits were real, you're going to die, all right? There's something really... They could stick out and stretch the skin. We know. We know what's happening. It's the worst magic trick ever. We know. There's an incision. They stuff a water bag under there and stitch that motherfucker up. And we're like, I don't care if I can touch them as long as they move closer towards me. I'm more happy and excited. We're weird about visuals, man. We, we, people mutilate their kids' dicks because of visuals. That's what circumcision is about. A lot of people, look, I'm circumcised. I didn't ask to be. I'm sure a lot of you are circumcised, and I'm sure a lot of you circumcise your kids. But when you really stop and think about it, it's kind of fucking crazy. I only have daughters, but me and my wife got in an argument about this shit. Uh, she goes, if we had a kid and he was a boy, I would want him to be circumcised. I go, why? She goes, because uncut dicks are disgusting. I'm like, how many have you seen? It was so confident. It wasn't like she saw two that weren't that pretty, but she was holding out hope for a cute one. It was like, no, I'm fucking seeing them. No, no, no. I'm just picturing a river of sleepy, uncut dicks in her past. Just, what are you saying? I'm like, that's ridiculous. The way it looks, really, it, no, 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 no. It looks gross. It's all this extra skin, like, do you even know what a vagina looks like? Are you serious here? Have you ever been sober and squat down in front of a mirror and, and take a good assessment of what the fuck you're packing? Because let me tell you something, the extra skin might be the best looking part of that contraption. All right? Because if you pull that apart, you got the predator's mouth, all right? And you're really giving me a hard time for some extra dick skin? How dare you? How dare you be so minimally committed to this passionate relationship? I lick your asshole, and you're here complaining about the looks of certain dicks? How rude. How thoughtless. And look, man, if you don't lick your girl's asshole, somebody has or somebody will. It's that... 
It's that serious. It's another level of commitment. I would never circumcise my kid, but what I might do is like cut it like a crown. No. <laughs> Yo, he's the king, man. My kid's the king. Go to the doctor, hey man, you think you'd do that shit in some kind of tribal pattern or something? <laughs> what is that? The fuck is wrong with us? I support gay marriage because I'm in a regular marriage and it's gay as fuck. <laughs> some of these are jokes! My marriage is not, and I should clarify what I mean when I say that marriage is gay. I don't mean it's negative. A lot of people get mad if you go to a movie and you come out and go, oh man, that movie was gay. Because they say, hey man, what if a gay person hears that and they feel terrible because you're associating something they can't change, their sexuality, with something negative. And that is not what I mean when I say that marriage is gay. What I mean is that it's like two dudes fucking each other. <laughs> I'll explain. See, it's not gay if you're happy. I'm happy, man. I love my wife. I love having kids. I've never been more happy in my life. But I know I'm not going through a divorce right now. And that's when shit gets crazy. Because that's when you all of a sudden have to talk to some people you don't even know and they decide what happens with all your money. And shit gets nuts when you realize that a lot of the legal system isn't really designed to solve problems. It's designed to make lawyers money. So they're allowed to keep arguing. They fucking keep arguing. You're like, can we settle this shit? And it never gets settled. I watched a friend lose everything he earned in a three-year marriage. He worked for 10 years, 10, 12 hours a day, and just fucked up and married over his head. Shit got crazy. He had to pay for her lawyer. Do you imagine what it would be like to go to war for the rest of your money and you have to pay for the enemy's general? I watched him go fucking crazy. I watched him at red lights just going, fuck, 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 fuck. You're like, what's wrong, man? Nothing, nothing, nothing. The dude was just, he was murder-suicidal. We were talking him off the edge. I guarantee you, if you came up to my friend Matt at his darkest moment and said, listen, Matt, I can fix your life. I have a time machine, and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to press this button, and we're going to go back in time to the moment before you met your wife, and you are going to get to live your life over again knowing the mistakes of the past. But before we do, suck my cock real quick. <laughs> That's how gay marriage can get. Because I don't know how you would respond in the same situation, but I'm pretty sure my friend Matt would have knocked himself unconscious sliding into that dude's pelvis. He would have sucked that dick like it was the horn of freedom. Like he was on a cliff with a conch shell. <laughs> Calling battleships. Like he was at the bottom of the ocean, breathing through a straw. <laughs> Freedom! And why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you? If that's all you had, how long could it take? You get a whole do-over? You wouldn't do it? I'd say you're gay if you won't do it. You don't want to do it, you want to live your whole life in a downward spiral that you're never going to pull yourself out of in this economy? Or, suck his dick in time travel. What are you, a pussy? Get in there, son. That would be my advice. I would say, suck his dick in time travel if you came to me. My other piece of advice would be, make sure he really has a time machine first. Okay? The last thing you want to hear after you blow a guy is him laughing about it. That is... It's a bad feeling, man. You're throwing up in the sink and he's on the phone. A fucking time machine! I told this motherfucker I had a time machine! Come on, man, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing, man? You know I ain't got no time machine. Come on, man. Come on, man, cut this shit. Let's be honest with what's going on here. Here's what's going on. You like sucking dicks, but you don't like to take responsibility for your action, right? So you get tricked a lot. Hey man, don't cry. Oh, come on, man, don't cry. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Here's what's up. First of all, I'm just fucking around, okay? And I do have a time machine. 
there's no worries, man. I got a fucked up sense of humor, but I, I crack jokes. But here's what's important. I feel bad. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, and I'm gonna make it up to you, okay? Suck it one more time and you can fly. <laughs> I did <laughs> It sounds ridiculous, but if you, if you put that ad in a paper somewhere, suck my dick and you can use my time machine, <laughs> most people would go, get the fuck, but at least once a week, you would get a guy who calls up and goes, how's this work? <laughs> you're like, that's what you're fishing for, man. You're not looking for flounder, right? You're looking for a very specific type of fish. I did that joke in LA and a guy came up to me after the show and goes, shouldn't do that joke because time travel is impossible. <laughs> like he waited, waited, he had to tell me. He's like a, one of those fucking assholes on Twitter that wants to let you know when you're wrong. Dude, time travel's impossible. And I go, what does that mean? For now? Are you sure you know what is gonna be possible a million years from now? That's crazy. Who, who, who saw fucking phones coming 300 years ago? Who saw 30 years ago looking at a phone and going, someday you're gonna watch people fuck on that? <laughs> There's a lot of shit we don't see coming, man. 200 years ago, if you wanted to picture something, you ought to draw it. Think of how stupid people were back then, you know? No one knows what the fuck the future holds, so you just say it's impossible to have anything in the future silly. And the guys, you don't understand science. It's called the grandfather paradox. The reason why a time machine's impossible is because if you had a time machine, you could go back in time and kill your grandfather before your father was ever conceived. Thus, you could have never have existed to make that time machine. And I'm like, what kind of an asshole wants to kill his grandpa? <laughs> Out of all the douchey shit you could do with a time machine? That's the name of a scientific principle, really? How about go back to high school and fuck everyone, paradox? <laughs> you know? I wouldn't kill grandpa, but I'll fuck the shit out of a few confused 18-year-olds, all right? <laughs> If all of a sudden I found myself back in 1985, oh shit, I might be running things. I would go straight Prince Purple Rain on those hookers, all right? <laughs> that I might do. Yeah, that's creepy, but what am I gonna do? I'm, I time traveled. I might show up while Hitler's taking a shit and punch him right in the dick. Can you imagine? If you could just pinpoint your location, show up in Hitler's bathroom. Oh, these Jews, I hate these Jews. <laughs> you disappear, he's screaming. Guys come in with guns. And the best part about that is you could do that over and over again. You have a time machine. Come back anytime you want. You could do it one tenth of a second earlier every time. He never sees you coming. But after like a couple of weeks of it, he starts to recognize you. There's like a hole in the space time. Right before you punch him. You! I might do that. You would have to be there right when the time machine is invented though. Otherwise, it would already be done. You know, like you would say, dude, let's go back in time and shit on Hitler's head. Fucking awesome. The, by the time you think about that, when you appear in the past, you will be on a mountain of human shit twice the size of Everest. Going, fuck, it's freezing up here. We were so unoriginal. The idea that if you had a time machine, they could fuck the whole world up, therefore people wouldn't use it. And my idea is ridiculous. Because you look at the shit that we have that might fuck the world up that we already use. Like nuclear power. You see what's going on in Japan? That's fucking scary. They don't know how to turn nuclear power plants off. Did you ever even guess that that was the case? <laughs> Wouldn't you have assumed there was a conversation about that back in 1970? Hey man, what happens if the power goes out? Dude, don't be negative. <laughs> it's not gonna go out. We're just gonna build this sun out in a field. We're pretty sure we can keep it cool. Or it'll eat through the fucking earth. What, what are you, children making shit? What the fuck are you doing? They wanted to cool it off, so they poured millions of gallons of ocean water on it. And then they poured that water right back in the ocean. Like, do you motherfuckers not watch your own monster movies? <laughs> you guys made Godzilla. And that was your solution? That's like a kid spilling a gallon of milk and then cleaning it up with his underwear. It's like, what are you doing, you fuck? You made an even bigger mess and you're naked. Get out of here. 
let me handle this. I'm gonna put a big fence around this fucking place. People are crazy. We're a bunch of button pushing monkeys, man. I think that people are responsible for the Big Bang. And it's the stupidest idea I've ever come up with. And it's not even real I'm my idea because I was high on a pot brownie in an isolation tank when I came up with it. But the, the idea is, we are also, we're fascinated by technology. The biggest experiment right now is the Large Hadron Collider. You guys know what that is? It's the biggest experiment in human history. It's 10,000 different scientists from 100 different countries, and they've made this 22 mile long something fucking machine that's spinning these atoms around a hair under the speed of light. And they're gonna slam them into each other and make little black holes. But what's crazy about that is those particle physicist dudes that nobody understands, one of their theories is that inside every black hole may be a whole nother universe. And that what the whole universe might be is galaxies, inside every galaxy is a black hole. Inside that black hole, hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with black holes in the center, each with hundreds of billions of galaxies, and it's fractal, and it will go on forever. And they're just making this shit in Switzerland. There's a bunch of fucking dudes, and everybody's like, well, we gotta stop gay marriage. I'll tell you right now, there ain't no gay guys gonna live next door to me and treat me like an equal with his little wife. We are gonna make the fucking Big Bang. And I know it sounds ridiculous. And especially coming from the Fear Factor guy, it loses all credibility. But if you stop and think about it, man, they don't know how the universe started, but the big theory is the Big Bang. And that theory states that 14 billion years ago, the whole universe was smaller than the head of a pin. But something happened and exploded and created everything we see in the sky today. I think 14 billion years ago, there were some scientists. And they were probably autistic. And they were on anti-anxiety medication. And they were drinking Red Bull. And no one touched them. And they would masturbate. And they never cried. And they made a Big Bang machine. <laughs> and they sat around and looked at it. One guy went, I'll fucking press it. <laughs> and he hit that thing. And the whole sky went. <laughs> 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 and it's a reset button for the universe. And every 14 billion years, we hit it one second quicker. <laughs> And that's infinity. Maybe, or maybe I was high as fuck and I'm just making shit up, okay? Just like those assholes that made the Mayan calendar, all right? Maybe just enjoy your time here. Don't fucking sweat the doom and gloom, yo. If you have friends that are into the Mayan calendar, man, that shit's annoying as hell. Bro, the Mayans, dude. Bro, ancient knowledge, you don't respect the Mayans. The Mayans had amazing technology. The Mayans could predict lunar eclipses a thousand years in the future. Did you know they figured that out? Did you know they hadn't figured out shoes? <laughs> we can learn shit from the Mayans, like how much mushrooms not to do. How about that? <laughs> Build an awesome society and then start playing football with human heads. They played a football game with human heads where they sacrificed the winning team. How high do you have to be to even bring that up in a meeting? <laughs> they like had their hands, they didn't even know the world. They were ridiculous, man. They were silly people. They're not here anymore. They never saw that coming, yet we think they figured out the fucking end of the world? <laughs> really? Dude, the Mayans were wise, bro. You're being so uncharacteristically harsh. The Mayans knew about the bird deaths. They knew about the fish deaths. They predicted these, the mass animal extinction events. Have you seen the bird deaths? People are like, whoa, dude, there's a thousand birds dead in South Dakota. You know what my response is? Maybe they realized there were birds in South Dakota that just flew into each other at full speed. Ah, dude. What kind of shit life is that? If you woke up tomorrow and realized you were a bird in South Dakota, you'd fly right into a fucking electrical tower. What kind of shit existence is that? And how do we know that the bird death was a bad thing? How do we know it wasn't just one badass worm that became a fucking sorcerer? Got tired of those cunt birds eating his whole worm family. So he put on a hat with moons and lightning bolts on it. Fire came from his head and the birds fell out of the sky. Ah! How come it can't be a happy story? Fuck birds, I'm on team people, all right? 
period. Talk your crazy shit with me. I used to love nature far more until my dog got eaten by a mountain lion. Which is, I've told the story in the podcast, and a lot of people don't think it's true. It is a true story. I was living in Colorado for a short period of time, and I saw a fucking mountain lion in my backyard, about as far as that gentleman with the backwards baseball cap. This is how far it was. I'm sitting on my porch, right? So my porch is right here, and the door to my house is right here. Not that far away, right? Fucking, the mountain lion's way out there. And I didn't, I didn't know there was a mountain lion there. I'm just sitting in the back porch going, it's crazy they let you live out here. <laughs> it's weird that you can just, if you, you know, you get a house out here, you just live in the woods. But it is, what is that, a fucking dog? <laughs> and this is why I panicked when I saw the tail. Because it was moving in between the trees, and you see like parts of its body, You're like what the fuck is that? And I see this creepy ass motherfucking tail. <laughs> And that's how I knew it was a mountain lion, because nothing that's nice has a tail like that. <laughs> Not, that that's a tail of something that's thinking about fucking someone up on the sneak tip. <laughs> it moved out of the woods and it popped its head between two trees and we made eye contact. And I did not mean to do this, but my whole body dropped by two inches and I went, ooh. <laughs> Like there was no chest puffing. What, bitch? Think you're gonna fuck around on my lawn? All I was thinking of was I was sitting on the porch, I was looking at the door, and I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> I just looked at this thing, and the realization that I fucked up, it was so strong. It was such like a, what did you do? What the fuck are you doing? The only thing that's close to that feeling is when you're talking to a girl, and halfway through the conversation you realize, this is a dude. figure out how to approach the situation. Do you fucking run for it, then it just instincts kick in and it starts chasing you? Or do you treat it like an asshole and just start moving a little bit at a time? Like, what, you think I'm stupid, bitch? You don't know what the fuck you're doing? It took off, it eventually took off, and I, 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 it ate my dog. That's a true story, it was a week later, it ate my fucking dog, it was casing my house. That was weird. But what was really weird is how the police deal with it. I called the cop up and I go, hey man, a mountain lion ate my dog. He goes, you gotta keep him inside at night. <laughs> and then I decided right then I was moving. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Did you not, did you say, I thought I heard you say, did you say you gotta kill everything that eats dogs? That's what cops should say, right? You don't kill them? You don't kill these dog eating monsters? He goes, hey, 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 no, of course we don't kill them. It's against the law. We need them. You need them. They keep the deer population down. Do you know the deer are not bulletproof and they're made out of food? <laughs> so, what you're telling me is that you need monsters just wandering through the woods eating up all the extra food. Who the fuck let you in charge? You crazy legacy thinking assholes. It's nature, man. It's like granola. <laughs> they had a sign up. If you get attacked by a bear, play dead. If you get attacked by a mountain lion, fight back. Really? You got signs on how to fight monsters? <laughs> Why don't you burn these fucking trees down? You got monsters hiding in the trees. How much do you really like looking at trees? You need a certain amount of nature in your life. You don't want to go completely no nature. That's not good. People left up to their own devices, that's Las Vegas. <laughs> and that's only good for a visit. It's only good for a visit. You're not supposed to live anywhere where they let you drink 24 hours a day. That's fucked up. And they give you free booze when you're gambling. Oh, fuck you, that's crazy. How is that the law? And it's all Red Bull plus something, so you got a fucking chemical battle going on in your consciousness. Half of you sped up, the other half is fucked up, so it's just a seesaw battle of retardation. When you're on Red Bull and whatever, and it's like nine o'clock in the morning, you don't even know who the fuck you are. You got one cylinder that's just moving your feet in certain directions and making up decisions on what you're gonna eat. We went to the Spearmint Rhino Strip Club at 9.30 a.m. on a Thursday. Yeah. 
and it was packed. That's what was really depressing. That's one of those dumb Red Bull and vodka moments where you're too stupid to be making your own decisions. We were eating breakfast. We were down to two word sentences. We were just like, waffles, bitch. <laughs> you know how you get there? You know, you know how you get there? You get to those, uh, and nobody says anything for a minute. Somebody goes, word. And all I'm thinking of is sleep, man. All I'm thinking of is, oh, I can't wait to hit that pill. It's gonna be so nice to go to sleep. And I hear, hey man, you guys wanna go to the Rhino? And I'm like, fuck. That's my voice. So I look at them to see if they heard it too. <laughs> And they're like, it's open, it is open. It would be open right now. All men need is one dude in the group that's more fucked up than everybody else. And then they feel normal. You know, you could be the craziest whoremonger of all time. You're like, well, I'm nothing like Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's a fucking animal. You just need that one dude. Let's go to the game, let's go to the game. Let's get coke and hookers. <laughs> and then there's silence and someone goes, are you serious? Who's, who's serious? Are you serious? <laughs> and then you always have to have the conversation with the wife. Why are you even hanging around with him? He's so beneath you. Yeah. Like, we're, I'm loyal. He's a good buddy. I don't agree with the way he thinks about women, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, man. We got there and it was packed. There was nowhere to sit. It was like the opening scene from Blade. And I was just, I was on so many different things. I was on, a, I smoked some pot, I ate some pot, I drank a lot of whiskey. There was a lot of things going on. And I was sitting there, you know those moments you have when you're pissing? When you go to the, when you gotta reevaluate your life when you're hammered? Ladies, I'm sure you have those too, but it's a different thing. For dudes, it's like this blank moment, almost like an isolation tank where you're forced to stare at a white surface. And you're pissing, you're like, I probably should just get the fuck out of here, right? kind of a joke is that? <laughs> Fucking ridiculous, man. I'm preparing for the apocalypse. I thought the apocalypse wasn't gonna happen as soon as Rick Santorum dropped out of the race. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I don't know if Rick Santorum's ever had gay sex, but I'm pretty sure it's on his bucket list. How about that? How about that? You weak chin bitch. You wanna be the king? How dare you? And this is how you can tell that a man cannot be in charge when he concerns himself with trivial matters, like gay marriage. There's only two reasons that you hate gay marriage. Is one, you're dumb, or two, you're secretly worried that dicks are delicious. That's it, that's all that's there. You can see it in his face with his small jaw. He's just fighting the gay. Fight it, fight it. Him and Sarah Palin could have got 100% of the retard market. That was, a, that was a dangerous time for us. That's why I think the Mayans are wrong. There's a lot of people that hate Sarah Palin, but I do not. I, I don't find anything wrong with her. There's nothing that she does that I probably wouldn't do. And I, didn't, I don't think the same things that she does, but she's not qualified to be vice president, and neither am I. But if they asked me, I'd probably fucking do it. I'd give it a shot. I'd be like, how much does Joe Biden work? Does that guy even get up before noon? Would the country be exactly the same if Joe Biden didn't exist? I say yes, I say there wouldn't be a fucking thing changed. I could do his job with three extra emails a day. I really don't find, I've, I'd get like 500,000 extra Twitter followers, man. That's no joke. That shit's valuable. So why shouldn't she do it? Sarah Palin's living in the fucking frozen north. She's not even in America, okay? She's living up in some place that's not attached. And everything that's not attached is just some shit we stole, okay? That, she is the queen of a frozen Puerto Rico. That's what the fuck is going on. So she's living up there and they ask her, do you want to be a millionaire? She's like, well, no, I'd rather just dodge moose on the way home every fucking day. I'd rather freeze to death walking to get my mail. What do you expect, man? What do you want her to do? My friend's like, she's fucking dumb. She never reads. I'm like, what, do you? 
You gotta be honest, all my best friends don't read. How about that? She talks a lot of shit. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Neither do you, bitch. How about that? I pull Google out on your ass all the time, son. Bro, I didn't even see the fucking fuss. She's not even hot. Um, she's not maybe Atlanta hot, but I'll tell you what she is. She's Bettendorf, Iowa, Holiday Inn, Hotel Bar, 1 a.m., three Jack and Cokes, hot as fuck. How about that? Ain't no disputing that. There's a reason people are cheering. That's a goddamn truth. That's some goddamn truth. She leaned over with her chip fingernails and cigarette and whiskey breath and said, let's get the fuck out of here. You're like, let's get the fuck out of here, baby. Woo! But she can't be fucking president. Slow down. Slow down, son. Just because you want to fuck her doesn't mean she can be the queen. Settle. There's a lot of bitch men out there that think life is a Kevin Costner movie and they're waiting in line to buy a book from her. She's gonna sign, you're waiting in line to get a book signed by a chick who doesn't read books. Come here, son. <laughs> Have you ever done squats? Do you know about deep squats? Do you know about deadlifts? Do you know about bison meat? It's really healthy for you. <laughs> well, Sarah Palin, I just think, is the only hope for the conservative movement in this country. They have like a planned speech to meet her. Mrs. Palin, I just wanna say that you make me proud to be an American. And I think you're probably the only hope for the right in this country. And I just, may I shake your hand? And as soon as they touch hands, he nuts in his pants. Oh, oh. They tackle him and tase him. First of all, she's wearing glasses and that's a goddamn dirty trick and every man knows this. It's a goddamn dirty trick. Women might not know this because you don't know how fucked up we really are. And this is nothing we're proud of, but I'm going to be honest and everyone will back me up. When a man meets a woman and she's wearing glasses, the very first thing that pops into his head is, I wonder what it would look like if I came on those glasses. <laughs> we're not proud. It's not something we dwell on, but it fucking pops in there, man. You just get it down. Hey, stop it all that. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you too, Mrs. Clinton. You know? But you, you don't want to dwell on it. But it's not fair, man. She can get fucking contact. She knows what she's doing. She's sending a signal. What's up with this? I mean, uh... Plus, she lives in Alaska. Man, I think if you live in Alaska, you probably have to have glasses on just for protection. There's probably only like 10 chicks up there. Dudes are jumping out of woods and fucking jacking off of people's faces. Big Yosemite Sam mustaches. <laughs> Just waiting for women behind bushes. She's probably got 20-20 vision. That's probably a protection issue. <laughs> Boo, little Sarah Palin. I really do think she's a nice lady. And this is why I say this. They wrote a tell-all book on her where a dude followed her. They went to her town. He lived next door to her for a year and wrote a tell-all book. And the worst dirt he could dig out was that she might have had an affair with a jet ski salesman. <laughs> and I'm like, do you have any idea how persuasive you would have to be to be a jet ski salesman in Alaska? I mean... Are you really blaming her for that? That guy might be able to fuck everyone in this room before we even knew what happened. <laughs> that guy might be a fucking hypnotist. He's selling watercraft in a place where everything's frozen. <laughs> are, we really, are we really discounting his pimp game? <laughs> She's out there hunting moose and shit. What's he gonna do? Baby, you need a jet ski? I like working for the UFC, but I don't like being around that many men who can rape me. It's <laughs> part of the problem. Some weird shit that gets said around. I was hanging out with Dan Henderson once, and we went to a comedy club, and the guy was heckling at the comedy club. And I go, if you don't shut the fuck up, I'm gonna have Dan Henderson fuck your girlfriend while he holds you down. <laughs> and I look over at Dan, and Dan, without missing a beat, goes, why would I hold him down when I could just stare him down? <laughs> Josh Barnett, that might have been the creepiest shit anybody ever said in front of me in my life. 
I was like, do you have no feelings for this guy's dreams? What kind of nightmares that motherfucker's gonna have for the rest of his life? This is certain realities, man. We are talking to a guy like Brock Lesnar and he's standing over you. There's at least 1% of your brain that's going, please don't fuck me, please. <laughs> it's not that he's gay, because he's not. It's not that even if he was gay, he couldn't do better than me. He could do way better than me. <laughs> it's that if Brock Lesnar wanted to fuck you, <laughs> it'd be his call. What are you gonna do, fight it off for a certain amount of time? When you get that guy the size of Brock Lesnar, he might be able to fuck you on this stage. He might just drag you up here, pants you, Brock smash! Ah! And there might be 2,000 of us in here waiting for somebody else to say something first. Like, <laughs> the only one in here that might be able to do something about it is Josh, and he may have, I might want to watch this play out and see how <laughs> the fuck this all goes down. You don't want to be that first dude. Hey man, what are you doing is morally wrong. What? Fuck, smash you! And he flies into the audit. Fuck, stampede. I'm not really worried that Brock Lesnar would fuck me. What I'm really worried is that he would use me as a condom to fuck something way bigger. <sighs> That's the real fear. And I'd wind up in the back of his pickup truck with a pair of bolt cutters going, Why are we at the zoo? Shut up! <laughs> Brock, make decisions! If 10,000 years from now they found Brock Lesnar's body and it was right next to David Spade's body, they'd be like, these are two totally different species. I think what's going on here is this one would just carry that one around and fuck it whenever he wanted. Like a human fleshlight, man. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I got in an argument with my wife about the Fleshlight, man. My wife, my, when, when the Fleshlight became a sponsor for my podcast, it was one of the rare moments when me and Mrs. Rogan disagreed with something. It was like, she was really serious with me. She's like, I think the Fleshlight's a terrible sponsor and it's bad for your reputation. I'm like, wow, do you even fucking know me? How crazy are you? <laughs> I'm like, really, really? I'm in like five documentaries on illegal drugs. I used to make people eat animal dicks on TV. <laughs> And you're thinking that, man, this, this fake vagina is gonna give people the wrong impression. They get... <laughs> Women don't like it, man. Women don't like it. There's something creepy about when you buy something and then you fuck it. There's something creepy. I love you too, but this, if your man came home, or if you came home rather, and your man was banging a flashlight, no one would be happy about that. It's weird. It's weird. There's a, there's a certain social weirdness to it. And what that comes from is that sex is supposed to be something that people, people give you when they like you. They, they, you get used to them. They get friendly. They want to give you affection. You give each other affection. And that's what it's there for. It's sort of like, uh, like an incentive to be nice to people. You're like, nah, no time for that. <laughs> There's something weird about fucking something instead of a person. Even masturbation. See, the problem with masturbation really is so the fleshlight is far superior to masturbation because when you masturbate, you can feel your hand. So while you're masturbating, at least 50% of your brain's going, dude, you got a dick in your hand. <laughs> and then 25% of your brain's like, we got it, it's our dick, it's cool. And then the remaining 25% is going, ah. <laughs> that is the pie chart of the male mind during masturbation. And <laughs> thank you. And when you're masturbating, there's no room for other thoughts. You can't like stick some sports scores in there. And, you know, oh, I owe some money. No, man, it's fucking, that's it. Or you don't beat off. You know, the dog shits in the living room, you stop. What the fuck are you doing, man? You can't just keep going. It, it, that... Fleshlight changes everything. It's, it does not feel like masturbation. It feels like real sex. It feels great until you orgasm. And then that great feeling is replaced with a deep sadness. 
you, you realize who you are. This is you. This is, this is you at your best. This is you at the, 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 this moment right now, you've lived your whole life, you've learned all your lessons, and here you are, still fucking up. Here you are, here you are, nothing into a plastic tube. Oh, you don't even know your pants off, you fucking slob. You stand there. Oh. I don't care who you are, you could be the biggest winner of all time. You could be Michael Jordan. As you're nutting into a fleshlight, you're like, oh, Michael Jordan's disappointed in Michael Jordan. <laughs> Fuck is wrong with me? Will I never learn? And the real dark moment comes when you have to clean that fucking thing. Because that's the only time you can't pretend you're doing anything else. When you're fucking it, you can pretend this is real sex. Woo -hoo -hoo. But when you clean that thing, you gotta unscrew the bottom and release the kraken of shame. It just slides out of the tube like a slug that got been hit with a mallet. And your loads look so unimpressive when they're in a sink. You're like, how does that make a person that lazy little sack of nothing? You know, sad. I feel bad about my loads. When I was a single man with no children, I looked at my sperm as a completely different thing. Like a lot of you young, single, with no children people do. You look at your loads as like your Zorro mark, right? You're happy when you get a good volume, right? When you get a lot, you're like, I'm excited about this. Look at it all. But once you have kids and you look at your loads like, those could have been some awesome kids. Instead, they died at the end of a fake vagina. <laughs> and they died on top of some other sperm that was there from earlier in the day that I hadn't bothered cleaning up yet. <laughs> so to the last ones, what a shock. It's like getting tossed at the bottom of a pirate ship into a stack of skeletons. It's, it's fucking creepy, man. It's creepy. Mrs. Rogan particularly didn't like the Fleshlight because when it became a sponsor for the podcast, it was right after she had given birth to our second child. Now, doctors would tell you that when a woman gives birth, she's not allowed to have sex for six weeks. I say eight, because I know how I fuck! What's up? Imagine telling that to the doctor, bitch, you don't know how I fuck! Six weeks, dude, her... Her taint looks like Nick Diaz's eyebrows. Can't we live a, a little extra time? Do you even know what the fuck you're proposing? Do you know how I bring the thunder? I carry all my weight in my hips and ass, bro. Taints go, dude. Taints, taints are not designed to really absorb punishment. They're designed to be the airbags of the vagina. They just give out in case of emergency. And then, look, man, you don't think about it because you're a man. Okay? Especially men who don't have children. You look at a baby, you look at a vagina, and you go, those are two totally different sizes. How, who gives a fuck? What are they? <laughs> like, I don't have to worry about that. But you do have to worry about that when you have your own kids, and it comes out of your wife's vagina. And then you're like, whoa, I never even thought about this. This is crazy! And luckily, Mrs. Rogan went with the epidural, which is the way to go, ladies! What the fuck is this crazy trend to go old fashioned when it comes to making babies? Like, no, we're gonna use a midwife and we're gonna have it in my bathtub. Ooh, why don't you ship that baby out in the bottom of a teepee, Pocahontas? <laughs> go rinse it off in river water and hide the placenta from the wolves. You have more that makes you feel nothing while your pussy explodes. Do you know that a bathtub used to be modern technology? Yeah, that was back when they just had only the river. <laughs> Crazy fuck. Mrs. Rogan went with all the good stuff. She didn't know what was going on. She was totally dumb. It was really crazy. Because they're moving her legs around. It's all like flippity floppity and shit. And, and she had a, like a little tent in between her and the, the baby area. And so the doctor's pushing. <sighs> There's like virtually no pain, it's amazing. And the taint is going, man. The, taint, the head's coming out, I got a big head, my kids have big heads, and it's just, that's the way it is. And the, the, the taint goes like a squirrel tied between trucks, just. <laughs> and I don't say anything, and I see he sees, and I don't wanna be the guy to be like, what the fuck is this, you know what you're doing? 
you gotta assume this dude knows what he's doing. He's given birth to hundreds of babies. That's his thing, man. You know, I, I, I just assume. So he gives me, he gives me the baby, he's like, cut the cord. I go to cut the cord, instead of cutting it, we're like this. Uh. You know that little sideways thing that happens sometimes when you go to cut something? Like, what a shit way to start a life. Uh. Start a life with a dorky fucking. So I cut the cord, I give my wife the baby, my wife's crying, the baby's crying, I'm crying. She's like, hey little girl, welcome to the world. And all I'm thinking, the first moments of my daughter's life is, how is he gonna fix that paint? <laughs> and I'm thinking, how long do I have to look before I check? You can't just like, take the kid. What the fuck's going on down here? <laughs> the baby looks like a moccasin, that's what it looks like. The dude had a marlin hook and some shoelaces. He just... He's tightening this thing up and I'm watching this go down. My wife doesn't have a clue. Here's the tent, she's got the baby. She's like, hey little girl, welcome to the world. And her body would go like. And I'm like, this might be the craziest intersection on earth right here. I'm watching two completely different worlds play out right next to each other, and they're on my wife's body. On this side, we have love and happiness and the first day of our daughter. And right next door is a fucking Hellraiser movie. <laughs> it's just hooks and neat and hooks and neat. And he gets to a particularly grisly sex in the vagina, and as he's forcing the hook through, he goes like this. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I lost it. I'm like, listen, man, there's no, I don't have a whole lot of rules in this life, but you gotta keep your tongue in your mouth while you're stitching up my wife's pussy. <sighs> Imagine if there's like one dude who was like really good at stitching up pussies, but he was kind of crazy. Like, oh shit, look what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Take. Mm. Man, I think you just spit on my wife's vagina. Oh, motherfucker, you insecure. Listen, my wife doesn't like any of this, if you want to know. Man, you have babies or something, it freaks you the fuck out. It freaks you the fuck out when you like someone more than you like yourself. That sounds like some shitty lyrics to a Nickelback song. <laughs> but I really do love my kid more than I like me, and I can prove it. The other day in my house, there was two bananas, right? And one of them was yellow and delicious but the other one was brown and fucked up. And I wanted a banana, but my daughter loves bananas. And she asks for them. She's like, Daddy, can you get me a banana? And I give them to her, and when she eats them, she goes, delicious. Delicious. I didn't even think about it. I just started eating the shitty banana. And while I'm eating this fucked up, brown, mashed potato, textured banana, I'm like, this is the only person in the world I would make this choice for. Because I love my wife. But if it was just me and my wife, I'd be like, ooh, I guess that bitch is getting a shitty banana. <laughs> Not only would I, I would leave the peel and rub my balls on the counter. Like, you know who keeps the lights on this motherfucker? It's a weird thing, man. It's a weird thing when you try to grow up. You, know, you ever try that shit? That's creepy. So I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to see how fast. No, this is, no, this is not a text, this is I'm recording. I'm recording the whole show. Well, I'm filming this, but I'm also recording it myself because I'm a fucking weirdo and I have to listen to it in my hotel room. It's, I, well, this is the least nervous I've ever been for a comedy special. I, this is like a regular show. It's weird. Every other, every other time I've done a special. I fucking freak out, man. Like, oh, get it right, get it right. But you guys are so cool. I, f I swear to God, I came right out and it was, it was easy. You need to settle down, 420 boy. You're drinking alcohol. That is not the 420 medicine. <laughs> Listen, I'm no perfect person. We're all weak inside. Here's something that can make you happier. If you go to an ATM machine, you know a lot of people are quiet at the ATM machine, just like at a bathroom. This is what I do, and this is what you can do too, but you have to do it all the time. If you're gonna commit to this, it must be 100% of the time. As soon as the money comes out, you go, dollar, dollar bills, y'all! <laughs> it's especially fun if you don't know if the money's coming. If you're like, 60, did I get crazy? 60, give me 60! Dollar, dollar bills, y'all! 
I did it. I did it recently at an ATM, and there's a dude behind me. He goes, "Motherfucker, you really do do that." Like, yeah, I really do do that. <laughs> do it, man. It makes it more fun. Otherwise, it's just weird, and everybody's quiet and thinking someone's gonna rob you. <laughs> and plus, it's one of those things where a song got stuck in my head, and I had to utilize it. I have a terrible brain for shit that I don't like getting stuck in. Like, if you, sh you play me a shitty fucking song, there was a band called Imperial Stars that got arrested in Los Angeles because they caused a traffic jam. They blocked off the highway with their tour bus and did a music video about traffic. Traffic in LA. It's the worst fucking song ever, and I couldn't stop singing it. It was like a Coen Brothers movie. It got stuck in my head like a goddamn computer virus. This is the worst lyrics of all time. You ready? I'm a rock star living on the edge. I'm known for hanging out and partying with my friends. <laughs> like someone wrote that down and went, done, next lyric. <laughs> that shit's as good as it gets. I couldn't stop singing it. I couldn't stop singing it. I was singing it while I was eating. If you were talking and I didn't like what you were saying, it just started playing. <laughs> and this is where it got terrible. This is where I knew I had a real problem. I was having sex with Mrs. Rogan. And in the middle of it, I was mouthing the lyrics. We were doing it in the doggy style position. And I'm like, I'm a rock star. And then I realized how pathetic that was. And then I got disappointed. And then I lost concentration. And then I started going soft. And then I tried to bring it back. But then I faked an injury. Ah! Fuck! Ah! Fuck! Ah! 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 And you got to do a violent fake injury. You can't like, ow! You can't fuck through that kind of pain. You gotta have like some serious meniscus bucket handle tear shit going on. You can't. And you gotta lie, man. It's a time in your marriage when you love someone, you gotta lie to them. For their own good as well as your, yes, for your ego, but for her self-esteem. There's certain shit women don't wanna hear. Thank you, I love you too. I love you too. But you know, if, you're, if you go limp in front of your wife, she's like, what happened? Funny. Just thinking about this band. <laughs> I'm a rock star, living. I want you to listen to this, then we'll fuck. How's that? It'll bring me back up. I'm a rock star. I caught myself singing Hey There Delilah once in an elevator, and I didn't even realize I was singing it until I noticed that my legs were rubbing together like a cricket. <laughs> I was alone, I was vulnerable. I was like, oh, what you do to me? Oh, what's up? It's like I was being attacked by a gay ghost. What's going on here? Where is this coming from? Hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? Don't you want to answer that question? I bet it's awesome, because you're not there, you fucking rhyming stalker weirdo. How about you let her go, dude? Where's that guy's dad? Where was he when that boy wanted to play catch? Huh? Where was he? Oh, what you do to me? What, make you write shitty rhymes? Is that what I do to you? Is that my legacy? And I'm not saying that I don't like that song, because I do. That's what I don't like about it. What I don't like about it is, I like it. They got me, those motherfuckers. If I'm in my car and no one's in there with me, I'll turn that shit up. I'll sing along. Uh, what, you, what I don't like is that they got me and I think the guy's kind of fucking depressed. I don't like getting sucked into anybody's depressed thoughts. I don't mind if what you're thinking about is some kind of stupid shit because I like a lot of stupid shit. I don't think there's any one correct way to live this life. I have a feeling that this life that you and I are experiencing might just be one frame in some infinite movie that goes on forever and makes no sense to any of us. And I think that the one thing that we can really choose to do, we can choose to have more fun. We can choose to party more. We can choose to laugh more. We can choose to take shit less seriously, be a cooler person, tip more, cut the cunts out of your life, and have yourself a good fucking time. Which is why I like listening to Ludacris. I've never seen a picture of Ludacris crying. Every time I see Ludacris, he's in a kung fu pose. There's girls in their underwear. There's a picnic going on. He's having a great fucking time. Here's one of my favorite all-time lyrics. It's from the song Saturday Night. 
how you gonna act like my rims ain't clean? Do you not see the beauty and the poetry of those words? That's what he's really thinking about. He's not worried about the economy. He doesn't understand the economy. Turns out, no one does. But you know what he knows? He knows he's got enough money to keep his wheels shiny as fuck. So he gets right in front of him and goes, ooh, ooh. And he's happy, because you can't say shit. Done. Ooh, ooh. Oh, what you do to me, oh, what you do to me. Or, I got a big weed stash, pocket full of cash, just seen a big ol' ass. Ooh, oh. Whose party are you going to? There's one day left on Earth, there's an asteroid coming. Whose party are you going to? Well, we went to the white guy's party, but he was crying and texting. That's all he did. You go to Ludacris' party, he's naked on the roof throwing buckets of ecstasy into the crowd. Oh, the, the asteroid's coming, they're trying to hug it. Oh, man, I love you, asteroid. Come on, man. Got a big weed stash pocket full of cash. Oh, what you do to me? Oh. Hey, man. It's the end of the world. We're at Craig's house, and we're all reading poetry and crying. I would love it if you could come over here. Yeah, I would, but I'm at Ludacris's house, and it's made out of diamonds. <laughs> Got a big weed stand, pocket full of cash. I became a vegan once I realized that if you don't kill animals, they live forever and become magic. And I got this tattoo, it's in ancient Sanskrit. And what it means is, it's a symbol for universal oneness. And that's what I believe, man. I believe that we are all connected, but that insecurity keeps us from recognizing that. But that love, unconditional love, is what brings it all together. So I got this tattoo. Cut to ludicrous. This tattoo says, bitches be sucking my dick, yo. You're gonna act like I don't blow clouds. Oh, what you do me? Oh, you do? It might be gayer to sing that song than it is to jerk off or look at a man in the eyes. I'd say it's a toss up, because at least if you jerk off looking at a guy, you could do it crazy. Like, what, bitch? You think I'm scared to come on you? You think I'm scared? Especially if you go knuckles up. That's an aggressive posture. You're sending a message like, I don't even want to be comfortable! Thank you, 